Hello everyone! I've got a really surprising fact about numbers to tell you about today. It's so surprising that even mathematicians are surprised by this. In fact, they can use this then to detect fraud. And it's called Benford's Law. Now, you can discover this for yourself. For example, take a newspaper and circle all the numbers. Now, I'm using the Financial Times here because it has a lot of numbers in it. And I'm only interested in numbers that can grow naturally. So I'm thinking of things like prices and percentages and stock shares. I'm not interested in page numbers and telephone numbers because that's a little bit too constrained for our purposes. But if I do that, there were 127 numbers on the front page of the Financial Times today. And my question is this, how many of them do you think start with the number one? Now you might think, well that should be about one ninth. So numbers can start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're not including zero here. So if there's 127 numbers, uh, about 14 of them should start with the number one. When in fact it was a huge 42 numbers started with a one. And if I keep going, uh, 21 started with a two, 12 numbers started with a three, seven started with a four, Six numbers started with a five, eight numbers started with a six, nine started with a seven, eleven started with an eight, and another eleven started with a nine. If I keep going, I'll find something like this. And it's a surprising 30% of numbers start with the number one. This law was first discovered in 1881 by the astronomer Simon Newcomb, but then was later rediscovered over 50 years later by the physicist Frank Benford while he was working for General Electric. Uh, but they both noticed it in the same way. They both noticed that pages near the beginning of their log tables were getting more worn and dirty than pages near the end, which suggested that they were looking up statistics that started with a 1 more often than with higher numbers. And then Frank Benford did what we just did. He would take newspapers and he started to look at the numbers inside. And he noticed the same thing, that numbers starting with a 1 turn up about 30% of the time. And then he started to look at other statistics. He started to look at populations, uh, the length of rivers, even things like uh, mathematical and physical constants, even street addresses. And they showed the same thing, that numbers starting with a 1 turn up about 30% of the time. And it doesn't matter what units you use. So if you want to measure the length of a river, you can do that in kilometres, miles, feet or centimetres, it will still be the same. The number one will turn up more often. And you can even mix up your statistics. So if you're taking numbers from a newspaper, those statistics are coming from a variety of sources, and yet the law still holds. Now, this isn't true if your choice is too random. If you went to random.org and generated a bunch of numbers, you'll find that numbers starting with a one will turn up about one ninth of the time. And it doesn't work either if your choice is too restrictive. So I'm measuring people's height using centimeters, and not a lot of numbers are gonna start with a three, except for you know, that one guy in China. To show you why numbers starting with a one turn up so often, imagine I put one pound in the bank, and it's a very generous bank. I earn 10% interest every day. So I start with one pound, then the next day I have one pound 10, then I have one pound 21, then I have one pound 33, and so on. And you'll notice I spend a long time around the low numbers, but then I start to skip through the higher numbers. And then I hit the teens, and it happens again. I spend a long time between 10 and 20, but then I start to skip through the higher numbers. And even from this, you can see that numbers starting with a one turn up about 30% of the time. And that's the general idea. And it is used to detect fraud. So if you're cooking the books, if you're making up numbers, people tend to maybe spread out the numbers evenly, or maybe start picking the middling numbers, like four, five, and sixes. And if these numbers don't follow Benford's law, they may be committing fraud. Now, I'm gonna show you why this is true, but be warned, this next bit is for serious mathematicians only. Like I said, this was discovered when Newcomb and Benford noticed that pages at the beginning of their log tables were getting worn and tatty. But some of you may not know what log tables are. 
In the days before calculators, this is what they used to multiply large numbers. Now, I imagine you know how powers of 10 work. So if I give you a number n, you can return 10 to the power n. So if I give you 2, you return 10 squared, 10 times 10, 100. If I give you 3, you return 10 cubed, 10 times 10 times 10, 1000. Now, as powers go up, you multiply by 10. So you get 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000, and so on. As powers go down, you do the opposite. You divide by 10. So you've got 1000, 100, 10, and 1. So 10 to the power 0 is 1. Now log, or logarithm to the base 10, is the reverse of that. So if you give me a number, I can give you the original power. So for example, uh, log of 1000 is 3. Log of 100 is 2. Log of 10 is 1. And log of 1 is 0. And you can connect those points together and work out log of things in between. So log of 50 is 1.7. Log tables were used to multiply large numbers because the log of x times y is equal to the log of x plus the log of y. So multiplication now just becomes the addition of logs. And you can reverse the process and get your answer. Now log tables only needed to go between 1 and 9 because if you had something larger like the log of 273, then that was just the log of 2.73 plus the log of 100, and the log of 100 is 2. Now, Newcomb and Benford noticed that the probability that a number starts with the digit n was the log of n plus 1 minus the log of n, but they couldn't explain why. I'm going to show you why, but the idea essentially is that if we collect a lot of data, we want the amount of data between, say, 1 and 2 to be the same as the amount of data between 10 and 20. And I want that to be the same as the amount of data between 100 and 200. And the only way you can do that is if the probability that you start with a number 1 is 30%. If Benford law exists and is universal, it should be unaffected by which units we choose to measure things with. So I could measure things with meters, feet, uh, miles, or pounds, dollars, ningies, whatever, and Benford's law should still hold true. So let's imagine we have some data like this. And what this shows is I have a lot of data between 25 and 40, but not so much data between 1,250 and 2,000. Now let's say I want to convert this data into something else. So I'm going to multiply it by 50. I multiply everything by 50, it's some sort of conversion factor, and the data changes and I might get something like this. And what we have now is, I have a lot of data now between 1,250 and 2,000. If this was scale invariant, that blue gap would be the same as that red gap. So the blue gap represents data that is 50 times larger than the red gap. Now if we took the log of this data instead, we would get this. And the blue gap now just represents data that is 1.7 higher than the red gap. Now remember, if I want this to be scale invariant, I want the size of the blue gap to be the same as the size of the red gap. So all I'm saying is, I want this to be unaffected under shifts. In other words, the log of the data should be uniform, like this. Now all I need to do is reverse this to find the original distribution of something that is scale invariant. And this is what we get. And from this you can see, if I doubled the distribution, the gap between 1 and 2 is the same as the gap between 2 and 4, which is the same as the gap between 4 and 8. If I times by 10, the gap between 1 and 2 is the same as the gap between 10 and 20, which is the same as the gap between 100 and 200. Now we want to know the probability that a number starts with a particular digit. Because the pattern repeats, we only need to consider the numbers between 1 and 9. So imagine I threw a dart at this. What's the probability I'm going to hit a number beginning with a 4? Well, it's going to be the length of the section between 4 and 5 divided by the total length. Now, the length of the section between 4 and 5 is log of 5 minus log of 4. And the total length, well, that's log of 10, which is 1. In general, the probability that a number starts with the digit n 
is the log of n plus 1 minus the log of n. And in fact, this works for any string of digits. Imagine I wanted to know the probability that a number starts with the string 1, 2, 3. Well, that's the log of 124 minus the log of 123, which is about 0.4%. And using this, you can start to work out the probabilities of digits appearing in other positions, like the second position, the third position, although that quickly becomes 10% for each of the 10 digits, 0 to 9. Now, I'm not saying that this is an easy proof, but it is a truly surprising fact about numbers. And if you have been, thanks for watching.